So in today's video I will show you the MR anatomy of the ulnar nerve at the level of the wrist. So depending on how much MSK MRI you are actually reading on a daily or weekly basis, there will be at some point be the question for a deep branch ulnar nerve pathology or maybe even just a ulnar nerve pathology. So if you then do not know the course of the deep branch or especially this whole like anatomy or setup here, then you will lose quite some time to try to figure that out um, if you have a long list waiting for you. So it can increase pressure on you. So I think it's quite helpful to understand this anatomy. And we will go now through these different structures here one by one. So first of all, you've got the ulnar nerve coming here on the ulnar side of the wrist, hence the name. It goes around the radial aspect of the Ospiciforme or pisiform and then divides into a superficial branch shown here with this light orange and the deep branch of the ulnar nerve which goes then to the depth of the wrist on the ulnar aspect of the hook of the hemate and then courses radially again. So this is kind of the course it's taking and it uh, is a motor branch whereas the superficial branch is a sensory branch. So the nerve goes through Guillaume's canal and this is basically uh, some relevant anatomy here uh, too. You can see this yellow reference line is basically the level of this section here. Um, we can see the ulnar nerve here together with the ulnar artery. And this one here is the flexor carpionaris uh, tendon. And above here, above the nerve and the corresponding artery, there is the palmar carpal ligament shown here in this kind of uh, blue diagram. So once the nerve approaches the division here into the deep branch and the superficial branch, the superficial branch just goes mostly straight ahead. Sometimes this diversion in these separate sub-branches of the superficial branch, if you will, it can occur already at this level here. So there is some variety and you can have trifurcations, etc, etc. So we'll come also back to that later on. Now, very important is here in this um, setting now the deep branch. So the deep branch courses over the pisohamate ligament. So the pisohamate ligament is connecting the pisiform with the hook of the hamate and is kind of the floor where the deep branch of the ulnar nerve is running over. Then above the nerve there is some fibrous tissue, fibrous arch, which is part of this kind of hypotenar musculature, but it's hard to visualize on MR. So You've got now here a, a narrow, basically a narrow position where the nerve can get impinged if you have any kind of uh, ganglion cyst or, or whatever. And the same is true if you go back here at these borders, the nerve is sometimes prone to uh, compression or irritation or whatever. So basically, if the question is for a deep branch or even a superficial branch or combined ulnar nerve pathology, like a distal ulnar nerve, neuropathy or something, you have to go through all these kind of branches to see whether you see uh, something obvious there. The deep branch, once it's passing here on the ulnar aspect of the hook of the hemate, then courses again radially here into the depth of the wrist. And there is also the corresponding artery branch that's going along there. And it's running below the flexor digiti minimi brevis muscle there. As I can show you quickly here in this example here, if we just do some blending, you can see the hook of the hemate here on this coronal view, and this is the pisiform, and you have this kind of ligament here. And sometimes it's better visible on a sagittal, as you can imagine. A quick patron update. I would like to say a big thank you to my three newest patrons. That is Ruslanos uh, for $50 a month, and also Michael for $50 a month, and also Radvansky for $2 a month. So a big thank you to you guys for your support, and I hope you find all the extra content that is available on patreon.com backslash actin. Uh, very useful and um, educational, of course. If you want to know more about Patreon and how you can support my channel, and you will get extra benefits for that too, then go check the link in the description down below. So if a ulnar nerve lesion lies within zone one, obviously because it's proximal to the diversion or the separation here into the deep and superficial branch, you will have symptoms affecting the motor and sensory function of the nerve. And if it's just a motor deficit, like a, a weakness or anything of the corresponding muscles, 
then it's supposed to be in zone 2. So only affecting the deep branch and if it's in zone 3 or affecting the sensory branch then you've got the corresponding sensory symptoms. And here is the list of muscles that are innervated by the deep branch so it's the abductor digiti minimi, opponent digiti minimi, flexor digiti minimi brevis so basically all the hypothenar muscle musculature then you've got the third and fourth lumbricalis and, and interossea muscle also there but there are also two other muscles the adductor pollicis and the flexor pollicis brevis which are on the other side and this is because the nerve is taking this kind of uh, course to the radial aspect in its very ending uh, pattern here so it also innervates uh, musculature on that side as for the superficial branch, it's a sensory nerve, as I said already, and it's basically covering the skin at this level. And there is some variation depending on which illustration you look up. Um, sometimes it's a little bit different, but I think you kind of get the point. So when we know the anatomy, we certainly need to know what to look for in with regards to pathology. And what we want to assess the nerve for basically are the two most important things is signal intensity of the nerve itself. I'll come back to that later. And you have to look for any kind of mass that's compressing on the nerve. And most commonly, these are ganglion cysts. But you can have also tumors like peripheral nerve sheath tumors, uh, aneurysms of the ulnar artery because it's just next to the nerve, any kind of old fractures or fragments that are impeding the or impaling the nerve. And if there is nerve damage, you also have to check for edema well, generation edema of the corresponding musculature that I just showed you here, so this group here, and obviously also fatty atrophy that's affecting just these kind of muscles. And there was a study a few years ago that showed that actually the increased T2 signal of the nerve, of the distal ulnar nerve and its branches is like a very good sign with um, EMG findings or electroconduction velocity findings. Basically, this is now for the deep branch in particular true. It's less so true at the level of the elbow. As you know, in the cubital tunnel, you can have increased T2 signal of the nerve and it doesn't necessarily indicate a neuropathy. But that too might be a topic for another video. So before we move on, I would just like to make you aware of something that I'm trying to do new with this video. So I started a collaboration with the Berlin Case Viewer app, in case you don't know about it. I have links in the description down below. So what it is, is it's an app for iPhone currently, but it will also be available for Android users uh, the next year. And you can basically scroll through the cases. Now uh, the anatomy is annotated. Uh, the relevant anatomy basically, uh, there are multiple choice questions and basically it's a self-education or self-teaching tool on your phone and what I will try now to do is put my cases also on the app and you can go and scroll through this here. So this is basically the first time we are trying to set this up and um, we'll see how that goes. The other thing is uh, after I show you the MR anatomy here in this case that I will show you soon here you have also the opportunity to see four different pathologies of the ulnar nerve, but these four videos are part of my MRI wrist masterclass. Um, you can also find the link in the description down below, which is a at least four hour course that is still expanding, where I go through everything related to wrist MRI. And it's a very good course, feedback is very good, and you can have a, or check it out, the reviews, if you will, also on the homepage. The other thing is these videos with the pathologies are also uh, Patreon exclusive, so if you are a Patreon, we will have access to these uh, videos as well, as well as within the masterclass. And then, last thing is, you have also all these four pathologies available in the Berlin Case Viewer app in case you want to scroll through the cases yourself and try to uh, crack the case yourself. Then there is the question, one or two questions, and then the anatomy is also annotated, as you can see in these kind of examples here. Now let's have a look how the anatomy looks on MRI. So we can see here a transverse section of the wrist on a T2 weighted 3D trophy sequence and we can already see the ulnar nerve very nicely here. Now let me zoom in a little bit more. So we are now just following this structure here from proximal to distal. Now I'm scrolling distal and I keep my mouse on the ulnar nerve. We are now here at the level of the PC form. We can see the ulnar nerve again. This one is the ulnar artery. So you can see even here these separate fascicles of the nerve very nicely here. We just follow it through. So we are now past the or past the uh, PC form. So we know that now 
eventually there will be the bifurcation and we can see how this one here so this fascicle i'm going back a little bit so this one is now going a little bit deeper and separating from the other two that are branching off here already so this is basically the level where we have the superficial branch and the deep branch now let's focus first on the deep branch the deep branch is then going on the ulnar side of the hook of the hamate downwards or more distally it's covered by the flexor digiti minimi brevis here and then it's coursing here just next to the flexor tendons into the palm of the hand and then it's running over here and then obviously it's branching out so you can see it up to here more distally it's it's hard to see if at all so going backwards this is the deep branch of the ulnar nerve and you can already see here there is a corresponding vessel that's uh, running along with the deep branch here so any aneurysm etc or ganglion or any mass along the course here could technically be a reason for distal ulnar nerve neuropathy going backwards again at the level of the bifurcation so that's it now if we now focus on the superficial branch we can then see here a muscle and this is the palmaris brevis muscle which is uh, very common commonly present and it's basically covering here the the superficial branch if you will you can follow it through here it goes distally and then it's branching out again so going backwards i hope you can see this on the video and this is the second one so the, these are these kind of superficial branches are further branching out and they have different names etc which we will not cover now here because i don't think it's actually relevant in clinical routine so if you would like to go through the same case that i just showed you in the video to go through the ulnar nerve anatomy yourself go check the uh, app store for the berlin case viewer app and this case is available for free and if you want to go a deep dive there are four cases with actual pathology of the ulnar nerve system that you can try to solve with multiple choice questions and you'll find more information about that in the app so that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit the thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe in case you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you get an email every time i upload a new video or might do a live stream uh, which i plan to do uh, pretty soon and with that thanks for watching and see you next time Thank you.